God bless. Good morning. Uh, I was on a retreat this weekend, a men's retreat in uh, Blue Mountain Retreat Center, New Ringgold, I believe, Pennsylvania. And uh, I was touched. Great messages, great, great fellowship, everything. Felt, felt the, whole, the presence of God like the whole weekend. And uh, yesterday's service, the last service before we went home, before we had lunch and went home, the pastor was the pastor was talking about uh, there was no condemnation. The first service was uh, no surrender. Then it was no no compromise, no temptation, and then the last one was no condemnation. Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit, right? So then he started going, I'm not going to say the whole thing though, but something something hit me, right? So like usually out of these services, like you get like a couple of things, you know, one or two things that it might hit you. You might not remember everything though, but you remember certain certain things, right? At least I do, right? You know, things that we're going through or things that we need to hear or whatever. And uh, so he went, so afterwards, so anyway, so afterwards he went into, uh, you know, as but after the spirit, we're not walking in condemnation, right? So we're walking, we're walking in the spirit. It, it, it's not Christ who lives, it's not I who lives in Christ, but Christ lives in me, right? I mean, Galatians 2.20, I was... I always forget. I love this verse. It's one of my favorite verses in the, in the Bible. Uh, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life in which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. His mercy and grace. I'm getting to mercy. And uh, so he, he went to James James 3. And this is... The wisdom is not which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic, for jealousy and selfish ambition exist. There is disorder in every evil thing, but the that would be condemnation, right? But but the wisdom from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruit, fruits, unwavering, without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteous is sown in peace by those who make peace. So he started, he started going through a few things. First, he was talking about peace, you know, blessed are the peacemakers, right? And uh, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God, right? And that was powerful. Though. But I, then he started talking about mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. So he started talking about uh, a story about Billy Graham and Franklin Graham, right? And Franklin Graham was was a sinner he was doing he was in the world right like we all were or if you are in a world like he was doing worldly things drinking smoking doing all these things not good right so he's talking about one day that billy billy graham was having a having a board meeting with all these important people right and uh franklin graham came up he went into the he went he was going to see his father, long hair, biker dude, looking looking like a looking like a hot mess, basically, right? And uh, they, you know, the secretary, or whatever, called Billy Graham, said it, you know, that Franklin Graham's here. And Billy Graham said to send him up. And Franklin Graham walked in, and Billy Graham embraced him. He hugged him, and he told all the bad, the board meetings that. This is my son, right? This is my son, Franklin, right? Whoever was in that board meeting, he wasn't ashamed of his son, no matter what he was doing, right? He loved the son no matter what. He showed him mercy. And his, and his son, when he, was getting, when he was getting saved, he saw he, Franklin thought about that, how, how my father was not ashamed of me. Even though I, I should have been ashamed of it, but my father wasn't ashamed of me. And that hit me. Like, I, I got tears coming in, in my eyes now. And, uh, I mean, Billy Graham is a great preacher. You know, millions came to Christ. Because the words that he spoke through the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, right? 
the Holy Spirit was giving him words, and he was this great preacher, revivals and stuff like that, and and uh. He didn't get people saved. It was the Lord that got people saved. And, you know, Billy Graham would tell you that, too. And he's like... But anyway, and he... But he was merciful on his son. He embraced his son no matter what because he was a sinner. And that's what God does for us. And I was like... I was going to talk about this last night. And I was just... I was so overwhelmed by God's mercy last night that I couldn't even get, like, the words out of my mouth. Like, or... I was, like, studying mercy and looking things up, looking scriptures up and stuff like that. And it was just like... I was, I was so overwhelmed because the definition of mercy, right, is compassion with forgiveness shown towards someone who it is, is within one's power to punish or to harm, right? Like God shows us mercy. He showed us mercy and grace by sending his son down to, to die for us. We don't deserve it. I know I don't deserve it. I was a piece of garbage. I was a sinner. Just like people out there, you know, I was, I remember, I remember I was, I was in a, in my early 20s, I was in the army. I was a, I was, a, I was a hot mess. I was drinking and blackout drunk and I had a, a cross around my neck and I, and I ripped it off and I, and I was cursing God. And I was like, and I think about that, like, I don't deserve his mercy. I don't deserve it. Like, I deserve to be punished. But he said, I don't. Because he knows we couldn't do this on our own. He knows we couldn't do it on our He knows I couldn't do it on our own. He knows we couldn't do it on our own. We couldn't resist the devil or flee from the worldly things that the devil tries to put into us on our own. We needed the blood of Christ to be saved. We needed that healing power of the blood of Christ to be saved. By his mercy and his grace. I deserve to be punished for the things I did. But he says, but he says, I, I've got you. I love you. And he's saying it to you today. He's saying, I love you. I love you. Open up your hearts. Let them in. Find his mercy, he's saying to you. His mercy is when he, he, he leaves the 99 and goes find that one. And he welcomes you. When a prodigal returns home and he's running after his son, that's his mercy. That the son didn't deserve anything and the son knew it and he said, I'll go to my father's house. And I'll ask to even be a servant. But the father's mercy wrapped him up, ran after him and wrapped him up and welcomed him home. And threw a huge party for you. And if one should repent and believe, then all of heaven will rejoice over one sinner. Amen. Amen. I pray that somebody got something out of that. And, and, if, and if you don't, just remember, regardless if you got something out of this or not, just remember that God loves you. Jesus loves you. And he wants you more than anything. Open up your heart just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. God loves you. So do I. I love you too. God bless you.